Welcome everybody, this is Denny with my YouTube channel, Why Is This True? And joining me again today is Carl Mollison from TeamArchangel.com. And Carl and I are continuing with our uh, channeling series. And today we're going to channel the light being Dr. Carla Turner, who is a researcher and author. And um, the impetus for, for many uh, current day researchers, most notably uh, Eve Lorgan and James Bartley. Uh, there's a pr probably a few others that I'm missing, but those are two that are pr pretty well known. And uh, Carla um, was an author of a book about uh, a fellow named Ted Rice called Masquerade of Angels. And she also wrote Into the Fringe, A True Story of Alien Abduction, and another book uh, taken inside the Alien Human Abduction Agenda. Uh, I did contact Carl earlier. And he did a uh, check on, on Carla, and fortunately she was in the light. The, the spirit rescue was not needed. So that's what we're going to do today. We have eight questions. And um, so welcome, Carl. Thank you once again for doing this with me. Um, this, is a, this is another uh, uh, person that kind of similar to the Barbara Bertolic uh, person that we did the channeling on recently. Thank you, Denny. I'm delighted to be here and to be supporting this work. It, it is of critical importance, and as we're discovering through talking to light beings, including Creator, the message comes forward loud and clear. We've got real problems that need answers, and the divine realm is a big part of what's needed now. And we need to get back into alignment, and that is our ultimate answer here for continuing with the shift in consciousness. It all comes from Creator, inspired by Creator, supported and uplifted and maintained by Creator. But we have a duty and we have a part in this and we've got to do our part. So I'm here to support you because you're right on that path. And I so appreciate your quest for truth and understanding of so many troubling things. So I, I do this uh, for a living in taking on the darkness in multiple ways. And in my practice work helping people with problems and applying what I call the Lightworker Healing Protocol, which the Divine Realm helped me to develop for healing, I see there are lots of issues with ETs. So I kind of stumbled into this. I mean, I've read for years like a lot of people who are aware at all of publishing and the cable networks and so on. There are abduction accounts. I always thought that was a small problem that happened rarely to an unlucky few. When I started working on people intuitively with a kind of protocol to go from A to Z, to see if they have entity attachments, if they have psychic attacks, karmic issues, extraterrestrial involvement, anything that I came across that's a potential negative, I put into the protocol and address. And I would scan and look at people intuitively. And what I found is about 5% of people have alien implants. That's a huge number of people, if you do the math. That's 15 million people in the United States of America walking around right now have been abducted. And this is worldwide, it's not just US. Right. And it leaves a legacy, it leaves emotional scars in people. And I'm working with clients right now who have tremendous uh, problems with the aftermath, not only of abductions in this life, but multiple lifetimes of interference with their lives and altering them and subjecting them to traumas serious trauma, very akin to uh, abuse situations and, and rape even. So this, this, is a, this is a sad tale, and it's a huge problem that extends beyond there. That's only one thing they do with humanity. There are many others. So, so I'm all for getting to the bottom of things and bringing information forward. And then answers. That's what I'm about. I, I want solutions right. for these problems. Yeah. And my work has led me to the divine solution. And as a channeler, as I probe more and more to find out about healing and how it works, I was shown things you can do by enlisting divine realm that actually work and actually help. 
And as I've probed more and more, they've told me more and more. This is how it works. They won't just go and dump this on someone who's an IE. You have to want to know about these problems to learn about them. Right. It's you just will. like any other aspect of life. You know, you've got to go to someone more informed and engaged with them in some way. So this is a process of discovery for me, but it's born fruit. I really know a tremendous amount about what's going on behind the scenes, and it's not pretty. So I really admire the people who've come before and engaged with this topic and done groundbreaking work to carry the the information and forward in the process of discovery and disclosure because it's critically important that right. we get on top of this and that people start to believe these things are real because that's the first step. No one's going to rally around an agenda with something they don't even think exists. Right. So we've got to we've got to get past this ignorance phase. Yeah. Get people up to speed. Right. And then, and then, you know, what's notable in Carla's instance that you know she was in great danger doing this research. You know, she was she had other people in her circles who saw the writing on the wall and they just backed off. Mm. You know, because it was just it was too dangerous. And um, yeah. So anyway, um, okay. Well, with that, Carl, I will ask you to start. We've got eight questions, and so it's it's going to be um, a good session. We'll probably be at it for a while. So. Okay, well, right. uh, let, let me start by telling you what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm going to quiet my conscious mind and connect intuitively with the divine realm and set up some safety parameters around the work so that we're protected. Okay. People need to know whenever you reach out intuitively, and even if you're just going about your normal day, you need to ask for safety, always. We used to do this. We were taught to pray every day, ask for divine support and help. People have drifted away from that, but there was good reason to do it. So whenever you meditate, you should always ask for safety. Always, always, always. Whenever you open up your mind and want to search what's out there and connect to greater understanding and awareness in any form, or to speak to a divine figure, including God, you should ask for safety as you do that. Because there are many beings out there who will be listening. And they'll answer your phone call. If they jump in and ahead, they'll, they'll pick up the phone and they'll be talking to you. And if you engage with them, then it's your choice. And the divine realm has to let that happen. So just a little note of caution there. Not to scare people, but to inform. Right. So the same problem befalls channelers, and this is a huge problem. I've been told most channelers are being duped. They are not channeling who they think they are. They've fallen into this trap. They naively thought, well, if I go to channel Archangel Michael or whomever, Michael would never let someone be an imposter and get in the way. You know, he'd come with his mighty sword and smite them or whatever, or God would come down and you know, give them a smack. And it, it, that doesn't happen, unfortunately. This is a free-for-all we're in. If you hadn't noticed, <laughs> the criminals sometimes get away with the crime unless we solve it. We <laughs> have to be the cops. So the divine realm won't police the spirit realm. It's up to us to navigate and to keep ourselves safe and have a have a, an awareness right. and, and be, uh, be, be smart about what we do and we don't do. So... This is a, this is a huge problem right now, a huge, huge problem. It's very sad, very unfortunate. So there are very clever extraterrestrial psychics that talk to channelers all the time, and they give them spiritual happy talk to uh, make people feel good, to give them a boost, and to convince them that, well, they can do everything on their own and just work on your manifesting and development and have a positive thought and think uplifting thoughts and be kind and you spread love and all those things. And, and that's all well and good. And, and it's a divine message. But what about the deep problem? What about the people who are schizophrenic? What about the people who are blowing up others and, and killing themselves in the process, the terrorist actions, all the criminality, 
the, this, the corrupted institutions. What do we do about those things? Spreading love is not going to do it in the near term. It, we, we need some interventions. We need ways to really actively heal things. And those things you won't get from those sources. It'll be happy talk, happy talk, happy talk, happy talk, happy talk. And that's deliberate. It's a disinformation. So there's a lot of confusing messages and contradictory messages, but very few are talking about the true divine truth. And it's a rare commodity. I wish it were not so. And I'm not saying that to try to put a spotlight on me. I don't want to be the only one. I'd be happy not being here talking. I'd just as soon have it be someone else. I have other things I can do helping people one-on-one -on -one without putting myself out in public and talking about a lot of craziness to what most people would see as that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a, the type of person to seek the spotlight. But I found myself in this position by becoming a channeler and really working at maintaining authentic connection, really working at it. And it's not easy. There are a lot of requirements and a lot of steps along the way to be ready. And so they will engage with you and you can fend off the interlopers who would get in the way. So just a note of, of, of warning for people to, to be cautious and buying into anybody's message. Right. You know, be thinking, be thinking. Does it make sense? Is it really going to be helpful or does it fall short in some way? You know, use your judgment and use your heart to see is this something that's positive based or is it about fear in some way? So these are just some, some potential uh, uh, checkpoints or tools of value, but all right, so I will get started now. Okay. All right, thank you, we'll Carl. We'll see what happens. So, thank okay. you. Thank you. This is Carla Turner speaking. Hi, Carla. Thanks for joining us. Dear Carla, I would like to thank you for your work while you were here and paving the way for other researchers who are continuing continuing with the research similar to yours on the alien contact phenomena. So with that, would you please say whatever you think is most important at this time? In the same way you honor me as my fans, we honor you as your fan because we value so greatly what you two are doing. You are carrying forward my legacy in a most beautiful way. The purity of your intention is a delight to behold. There are so many involved for selfish reasons to serve their ego, to serve their pocketbook, to serve their desire for domination of others, and to have some kind of power in a sort of contest with their competitors and so forth. These are the usual ways things become contaminated. But there are more serious issues going on. And that is the true nature of where this all comes from. And we can tell you with certainty from our perspective now, being in the light, being alongside Creator, every moment that the living God is out and about and among you and a part of you. You can turn a deaf ear if you choose. You can choose to be blind to all of the signs. But you can also choose to listen. And we are a representative here and now for you to sample divine wisdom. So we are doing our best to convey truths to you, to inspire and uplift, for that is truly what is appropriate here. There is plenty enough doom and gloom to go around. 
and everyone has a story, everyone has a favorite cause about a calamity about to happen, or one already ongoing, or one that has taken place and left great damage in its wake, and then the survivors need assistance. There are many tragedies. The ultimate reason for all of it is a corruption that has crept into the divine human experiment. The plan of Creator is to have heaven on earth as a group of physical beings endowed with the creative ability of the divine. This has been commandeered and corrupted first by very dark spirit elements who had a falling out and left the light behind and fell from that lofty status through their own choosing and corruption and then began dragging down many other beings as well. This they have done to humanity and they've done this as well to extraterrestrial races in your vicinity and they have found their way to you and are now interfering. This is what I was working on from the human side with my life in seeing this was a real phenomenon and one of great importance because of the damage caused to so many individuals. And as a light being now, I see very, very clearly why they are interrupting human affairs and wishing to overlay their rule. It is because of a long-standing corruption within them in which they have lost their connection to the divine. This is what dark spirits do. They work at this to disconnect people from their divine roots, the very lifeline itself. As a result, God is distant, and people are greatly unaware of the higher realms. The intuitive reach is blocked, and the inner turmoil has nowhere to go and no good solutions. So people lose their way. They develop all manner of difficulties, and the extraterrestrials exploit this. They are working with the spirit realm actively. They themselves are sending their own dark spirits here. All combine their efforts to attack each and every human being on the planet. They corrupt each and every institution, particularly the leadership. This is why the institutions are all faulty. They are flawed, do not work well, often work at cross purposes. So the issue of subjugation and repression by these forces is designed to destroy humanity in the end. The darkest of the spirit element need living beings to survive for that is how they obtain their energy but the extraterrestrials are happy to be the only players and would be quite happy to see humanity eliminated for all practical purposes the abduction phenomenon is a partial overlay here. It is not the main story. It is the most visible illustration of the agenda of extraterrestrials and their mindset, their perspective, to take people from their beds at night and manipulate them in profound ways, to subject them to sexual experimentation to fertilize them and extract fetuses 
to create hybrid beings that arouse the motherhood instinct in women and then snatch the baby away to corrupt the physical body with manipulation, genetic distortion, implants of various kinds to monitor very, the very thoughts and emotions of a person and in turn manipulate their behavior. This goes way beyond reasonable boundaries by any standard. This is an extreme violation of divine principles of free will and free agency for all living things. This, by human standards, breaks many, many, many laws. And the level of damage is quite intense and is building relentlessly with each generation. What you do not realize as a culture is that you are the current end product of all that has come before in your existence which extends back through time far greater than you can envision. Every bit of your prior experience through multiple lifetimes is piling on top of the previous round and will make a huge difference in your future for all that is not healed remains a festering wound and sooner or later will break open and then poison will leak into your life and you will have many many problems so this is an example of a major source of karmic influence and degradation to have extraterrestrial beings preying on you, altering your culture, disrupting your institutions, and causing all manner of physical problems, both environmentally and in terms of human health and happiness. This is what you are facing, and this I see now from my new panorama in returning to the light. Okay, thank you. Is there a line of inquiry that would be most beneficial for the purposes of alerting the general population to the true nature of the human situation?